Hey guys, thanks for watching On Call for All Kids, a weekly segment where we're talking about timely topics in pediatric healthcare with our experts here at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. Today I have with me Dr. Jasmine Reese. She is the medical director of our adolescent and young adult specialty clinic. And Dr. Reese, today we're talking about anemia, very important topic. Yes. So what is anemia? So when we're talking about anemia or iron deficiency anemia, we're talking about red blood cells, right? So we have blood vessels in our body and there's blood flowing through them. So that's made up of red blood cells. Um, so when you have anemia, basically we're saying that we don't have enough red blood cells. Um, and so then what causes that or what does that exactly mean? Because you go to the doctor and they might measure something called hemoglobin. So I'm going to try to simplify this the best that I can because it sounds a little bit complex. So you've got red blood cells. Red blood cells are responsible for carrying oxygen throughout the body to oxygenate all your organs so that they function normally. So to carry that oxygen in the red blood cell, you need something called hemoglobin. And hemoglobin is made of iron. So if you don't have enough iron in your diet, in your foods, you're not going to be able to have that process run smoothly in your body. Why is it important to, to understand how this process works? Well, because we don't think about iron every day, and so we need to be mindful, especially during certain ages, during adolescence, during puberty, reproductive health stuff going on in your body. Um, we're not thinking about iron all the time, and we need to make sure that we're mindful that we have enough iron in our diet. Because one of the most common causes for iron deficiency anemia, especially in adolescence, is usually due to poor intake of iron or not enough in our meals. Okay, so let's talk about some of the symptoms. As a parent, what mm -hmm. should we maybe be looking out for in our children? Yeah, so your kids or your teens might complain of fatigue, tiredness, low energy. A lot of times parents might say, you know, they're, they're sleepier than usual. They're coming home after school, they're usually pretty active, and now they're always wanting to go to bed or take more frequent naps. Um, sometimes they might have some headaches or lightheadedness or feel dizzy. Uh, more frequently and so that might be a sign that they have anemia and so that's a great reason to bring that up to your uh, pediatrician or your doctor. And can this be kids of all age ranges, male, female? Mm -hmm. Who do you see this yeah, most in? So it can happen um, in children, adolescents or even adults. So if we're talking about some of the causes, um, you know, our red blood cells are, are made in our bone marrow. So if you've got a bone marrow illness, a chronic disease or an infection, that can affect uh, your red, uh, red blood cell production. Um, if you have a traumatic event and you're bleeding, you'd be losing lots of red blood cells that way. Um, but for adolescents and teens, usually, again, it's, it's because we're not getting enough in the diet. Um, for teen females, they're going through reproductive health changes, and so menstruating females um, tend to lose a lot more blood and lose iron that way, and so we need to be mindful to make sure they're getting enough in their meals every day. Okay, so if we do take our child to the doctor, we find mm -hmm. out they are anemic, mm -hmm. what do you then do as the doctor? What are sort of the treatments? Yeah, there. so when, uh, when somebody is coming to me with those symptoms, uh, your pediatrician or myself, we might um, go ahead and do like a finger poke. So that's a quick check for a hemoglobin. That really is very limited. We're just looking at sort of one number there. Sometimes that number can be falsely elevated or low. And so if we truly are having symptoms, I would probably recommend go, going ahead and getting the full blood work. So getting the blood like from the vein, from the arm, and then looking more like iron storage numbers in addition to the hemoglobin numbers so that if it truly is low, then we might recommend not only including uh, good sources of iron in your diet, but you might need a vitamin supplement as well. Okay, Dr. Reese, thank yeah. you so very much. And maybe you have a topic you would like us to cover. If so, please just comment below on this video and we'll look into that for you. You can also visit our website, hopkinsallchildrens.org slash newsroom for more pediatric healthcare news. Dr. Reese, thank you again for being here and we will see you all next week.